Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, welcome to a special milestone episode of Pensado's Place. We'll tell you why in just a second. Dave is here, I'm here, and our guest you'll meet in just a second. But first, if you're watching this episode right now, that means we've posted it, and you still have a little bit of time at NAMM to attend a couple of things that we still will be doing. First up, uh, we call it Beyond the Mix. It's a special conversation with Derek mixed by Ali. That's Friday evening at 5 p.m. at the Hilton Hotel. It's up on the second floor in the Pacific Ballroom, and we'll have some hang time afterwards. You don't want to miss that. On Saturday, CEO and multiple Grammy nominee Rance Dobson will be with us at the Avid booth. Uh, if you watched Pro Football last weekend, if you're in the U.S., Rance was in the Apple commercial with Timberland and a bunch of other people. Um, I'm hearing James Fontlore may drop by, as well as a couple of other special friends, so come hang with us. And then Dave and I are going to return the favor and be at Mixed by Ali, Derek Mixed by Ali's booth at 3 o'clock on Saturday, amongst a whole number of things. If you want to see where we're going to be, you can go online. We're posting it. You can see it on the Instagram. So, again, if you're seeing this, it's Friday, and you still have time to make those events. We'd like to see you there. Um, and because I mentioned Milestone, the reason it's a milestone is you happen to be part of the reason we've been here for four Hundred episodes. That's right. This week's episode is the 400th episode. I think we're in the eighth year. Hard to believe. And we want to take a quick moment to, to focus on three areas. Um, you, the audience, our sponsors, and our team. Let's do that in reverse order. In our team, we've got amazing people that get this show up and down each week. Um, it's not easy. They have some demanding bosses. Um, there's a certain brand standard that we have to maintain because we have sponsorships. So the folks that you know, the Chongors and the Talishas and the Jordans and the Tylers, there's been people over the course of eight years that you don't know that have been just as critical. Couldn't do it without it. So Hosanna's to the team. It is a team effort to get this going. Um, it's also become very expensive. So sponsors are critical to our lifeblood. We don't have a sales team. Most of our sponsors are people who call us because of either our stats or our reach or whatever our influence is. So it's amazing that we've been able to finance this without outwardly going out. Um, lots of folks are important in that space, none more than John McBride and Blackbird. True. Brand standard, incredible school, but an incredible audio brother. Um, early days, um, well, Avid has been there forever, yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing. Um, early days, people like Vintage King, Recording Connection, Audio Technica. Um, later days now, people have been good to us like Westlake Pro yeah, and, and several others. Um, and um, we've got some announcements coming up next week of some other big dogs who want to roll with us. So <laughs> that becomes uh, ultimately important. And then last but not least, and probably most importantly, is you. The idea that we can pull up our stats and there's 200 countries of, of folks who watch this and find it important. The things that people say to us when they come up to us mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. And um, so we're grateful and I think we're humbled and we're going to continue to push the envelope. And that's my take. Dave, what's yours? Well, first of all, uh, the show wouldn't exist without you. It was your vision and uh, your insistence on excellence that... Uh, I think it's the foundation and the reputation that the show has and, and gives it a special quality, not just to our audience, but to the people that sponsor us. And uh, the dedication you've had, you, you've made a lot of sacrifices and I can't thank you enough for that because I'm one of the beneficiaries of it. And uh, uh, love you, my brother. Oh, love you too. I, you know, like write a check. No, just 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 kidding. Uh, <laughs> Somebody um, can but, cash it. <laughs> I'll write you all another, you want. That's another story. Uh, and we both, uh, obviously, Dave's insight, um, his gold standard brand in the audio space, the way people care about him. Um, our guesting started because they believed in him. And frankly, he was my ticket into the audio thing. Uh, nobody would have picked up my call if I wasn't partnered with him. So it's a mutual, you know, love affair. And the reality of it is, is that we're kind of amazed on the stamina side. 400 episodes, eight years, and you and I have missed how many? None. None. I came close with a 
No, we came I, close. I came we've close. gone through. You came close. We've come through famine, yeah. pestilence, you death. You passed out on the set one day. On the right right, one right day. when the camera stopped, you were gone. And you were lovingly rubbing my neck, keeping me awake. And so, a cold complex. anyways, there's more stories about that stuff, but we thank you mostly for the support. It's been yeah, amazing. For sure. And for sure. um, we'd ask you to continue because we got some special things coming and we're going to yeah. keep pushing the envelope. Uh, and if you continue doing this, signing up for a newsletter, liking and subscribing us and notifying, that helps us grow. So um, thank you for eight years, 400 episodes, and we got 400 more coming for you. Um, along with that, we decided to have a special guest, a friend of ours. He hasn't been here for a minute. We're going to see him down at NAM. He has um, won a Spotify Secret Genius Award. He's a been nominated for multiple Grammys, and he's won a few, and he's got a lot of business going on. Our good buddy, DJ Swivel. Welcome, Swivel. bro. Thanks for having me. How are you, man? My man. Good, good, Speaking good. Before we get started, yeah. first of all, thank you for having me on the, the first guests on the new set, which Absolutely. is beautiful. Uh, and then congrats on 400 episodes. I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. And what you guys have done for audio, uh, you've made it approachable for everybody. Oh, and uh, so I'll sort of take the mantle on behalf of all the guests. You know, we thank you for the platform that you've given us and, and just for all the information and knowledge. Oh, and man. That means love, a lot so. coming from you. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. And it's so Canadian of you. That's <laughs> <laughs> I forget yeah, about fellow that. Canadian. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Toronto? Toronto, yeah. Uh, yep, yep, I love yep, Toronto. Yep. Been uh, quite a couple of years for you, youngster. Um, yeah. <laughs> youngster. I mean... It's my last name, so it's a, it's a fair... That's I, right. Yeah. I wish I, I was still as young as I cool. felt. Well... Don't even, don't even go there. <laughs> um, the evolution has been, you know, mixing and stuff from Coldplay and Dua Lipa and, and Armin Van Buren and, and Chainsmokers. Now you're producing and writing and signing things. So, so let's, let's peel back the onion first. Um, one of the things that I've noticed about you from the time we started meeting is that there's an equal balance, which is true of a lot of folks who are really good in this business, between your business interests and your musical pursuits. Yeah. Right? They both drive you. Tough to juggle sometimes. I was gonna say, so the challenge sometimes has to be how to block off that space so you have to go be creative, right? Initially, I, I felt like I was quite good at managing it because w when you start as an intern and you guys have all been there and, mm -hmm. and uh, when you're doing over 100 hours a week and unpaid and you know, your, your pace is pretty, pretty quick. Uh, and so I, I always felt pretty comfortable doing it uh, but now as it's, you know, when you have one side business and then you have two and then you have four and then you have like, you know, seven other things over here. Yep. And then also being in LA, yes. uh, it, when I wake up, I wake up to 40 emails because <laughs> everything in Europe, everything in New York has exactly. already come in. Exactly. Um, and so it's become more and more challenging now. So I'm, I'm sort of in the middle of trying to solve that challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and part of that is bringing on partners and, and staff and, and yep. things like that to take some of the weight off so that I can still keep at least 50% of my focus on creative. Little tip. Yeah. Smart way you're doing it. Your next challenge will be that just managing the staff and the partners. That's the, that's the concern. It, it, exactly. <laughs> so, it, it, it never changes. Yeah. Also, within the, within the range of your engineering and creative uh, context, you, you, you Perhaps you didn't know it, perhaps you did, but you kind of are now the archetype for the future of our profession because I think, I think in the 90s and 2000s, early 2000s, we specialized like an, like a, an NFL team had a Tom Brady as a quarterback. <laughs> and, uh, and, and now uh, you have to play every position on the field in order to, to, to earn a living like, like you write, you produce, you engineer, you, vocal, you do vocals, yeah. you mix. And 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 so, in an odd way, you're you're the the poster child for the future of our profession. Yeah, well, well, not, not an odd way, but in a good way. <laughs> Thanks for that. I think I think there's probably room for both. The reason I write and produce is because I started as a writer and producer, mm -hmm. and then I kind of stumbled into engineering and, and mixing, and I found that that actually made me a better writer and producer because mm -hmm. I worked on everything, and then I started to have taste and like oh. Here's what I don't like about this person's, mm -hmm. you know, production. Mm -hmm. And I started to learn how to become a better producer. So, but other people come in and they just want to mix. And, and I think there's room for both. I think what I've tried to carve out is like, mm -hmm. even when clients send me records to mix, uh, if I don't like some things, and, and this is sort of what happened on a lot of the Chainsmoker stuff is, 
I'll work with the artist and say, hey, why don't we change this? Let's like work on this bass line. Let's like mm -hmm. change this synth here. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, add some drum fills here, some transitions. So I'll, mm -hmm. in the mixing process, I will do uh, production, which I've, mm -hmm. I've tried to, you know, carve myself out in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of mixers do that, but a lot like to just, you know, mm -hmm. touch what, what they're given. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there's room for both in, what, in, in the future. What's the, um, is there a swivel signature? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, is there a signature that there isn't a signature? <laughs> I know. Maybe. I mean, I, I know. Do you know? I know. <laughs> what is it? Tell me. Tell me. You like to hear shit change every like t two bars, every four bars. You like something every 20, 30 seconds. You like the way Ali does it. You like the way Dre does it. Yes. And that's, that's, that's one of the things that, that, that I admire about your work. And, and, and it, it influenced me too to do that. That's yeah, how I know even that. being compared to those guys, I mean, Dre is, we were talking earlier about like, you know, I think we all in our mind have our own Mount Rushmore of music producers. And I'm working on our piece that sort of reflects that. Dre is 1000% part of that. And Mix Biley to me is like carrying that, that, yeah, uh, that torch, torch, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, and so, advanced, yeah, I think music should always torch. be, you know, keeping you on your toes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it just becomes a little repetitive and a little. So you know, repetition is good, but so in those changes, mm -hmm. does that show up in your mixing work as well as your producing and writing work? Because yeah, producing I mean, and writing is a you know you're doing it on behalf of an artist that may have a point of view and so and so forth. And you know I I kind of look at them as uh, not separate steps. Mm -hmm. uh, writing maybe is a separate step, but production and mix I think are inherently tied mm -hmm. to the hip. Just extension. Yeah, exactly. it's an extension of of the other, and so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think mixing is, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't consciously do it. I just, I want to hear something new here. So maybe the mm -hmm. second drum fill going into the second hook is different than the first one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's make sure we, you know, you were talking about mm -hmm. when, when you were remixing, you want to mm -hmm. recut the vocals. Let's mm -hmm. make sure the second hook isn't just the first hook flown mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure it builds in some way. Change yeah. one note even. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, and so I, I like that. But, you know, I tend to work in all genres. I started in hip hop and done a lot of EDM stuff and a lot of pop music and a lot of Beyonce <laughs> right R&B and 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 now some K-pop stuff and so I, I think you know uh, I've, I've worked in all genres and and for me it's a matter of like respecting the genre and then just adding your little touches to mm, it absolutely. whatever that is and those touches are different in a hip-hop record than they are in a pop record tell us about th this ridiculous BTS <laughs> success it's it's so crazy so uh, I, I connected with them uh, actually, the, the Chainsmokers uh, produced a record for them uh, in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, and I mixed it. And then I just built a relationship with, with the team over there, and, and uh, they said, hey, do you have any records? And so I sent a few, and, and the first couple records I sent, they, they took. And, and the first one was, uh, was a record that I um, uh, co-wrote with uh, Candace Sosa, who's, mm -hmm. who's a writer and artist who I signed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they took it, and it became a single. And, then I just then they started actually sending us tracks from their producers. Ooh, so not even just that's always a good sign. Yeah, me producing, but also Candace and I will go in and we'll write top lines mm -hmm. uh, and melodies, and then they'll take those and obviously translate and and uh, do a Korean version of it. And mm -hmm. you know their team over there is so polished and, mm -hmm. and incredible. And then the success. I mean, nobody thought it would blow up here. So I got a question for you. It seems like recently that when like, like in the Latin market and in the in the Korean market and the K-pop market. A while ago, we would try to acquiesce to their sound and their way of doing things. And it seems now, you look at what Jason Joshua is doing. He's just doing Jason Joshua and having massive success in yeah. the Latin market. Sure. And to an extent, that was the approach for the BTS song. It sounds less Korean than just another song that you would do. Yeah, and I think that I, I don't know if that's healthy or not. Uh, well, what's you your know, opinion? I, I think. Uh, Did you try to sprinkle in some? I, I, to me, I try to make the best record. That's what period. I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but in the way that they sing, first of all, in in the U.S. market, there's, I don't know, any seven person, you know, male or female group. There's, you know, other uh, right. Korean acts. Um, I don't know that that exists, you know, on this side of the pond at mm -hmm. all. And so. What I found is, yeah, the production is similar and the writing and the melodies uh, to what we do here, but there's seven members. So you got to find room for all seven of them to have space on yeah, a song. So in your writing, the way that we tend to write is, 
you know, you might have two bars of, of one melody and then jump to a whole different melody or maybe jump to a rap, like mm -hmm. sort of call and response thing. And mm -hmm. you try to find ways to include all the, the seven members. And then of course, like in their, their visuals and their choreography and, mm -hmm. and all of the other things they do and just in their voices, they're, they're adding plenty of, of the- um, Do you think about the choreography when you're writing? No, I don't, but, mm -hmm. but to me, uh, like K-pop music is not just about the music, it's about the whole mm -hmm. picture. Yeah. It's about the videos, the choreo, the, the way they dress, their, their mm -hmm. tours, their interview. Like, mm -hmm. it's really, it's a, uh, it's a yeah. whole lifestyle thing. They're likable, and so, I like them. They are really likable. Yeah. I love them, they're I great. Like yeah. yeah, and so I, it, it makes sense why, I, I was quite shocked that a, I mean, they had two number one albums this year, which is in Korean language. I was quite shocked at that, but I understand why. I mean, and I went to their show at Staples Center and it wasn't like it was all, it was like 12 year old, you know, girls, guys, white, black, you know, it, it didn't matter. Like it was, everybody was there. The parents are singing along and I've never been to a concert where people scream so loud, mm. ever, Ooh, wow. ever. Mm. So um, yeah, well, I don't know how they've done it, but they're, they're really incredible. Seems like this year we've had a lot more non-English Groups, um, Spanish stuff is really blowing up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, that's healthy. The, the, this hybridization is of everything. Yeah, I mean, producers and mixers and writers or engineers and artists are doing their own thing, and technology democratizes everything. And so the music now is we're um, we were on a conference call with. Luca Predilisi, who <clears throat> has made his name in the dance world and the yeah. EDM stuff as a master, as a mixer and as a mastering engineer. Um, and he was saying, look, I started out in this space and now they are all blended. So there's not one thing I do. I don't just do trap, I don't just do this. It's, it's, everything, so the genre lines don't exist everything. anymore. Yeah, and if you don't, if you're not doing everything, then you're kind of not in yeah. the game. It's and it's making view. it a lot harder for, I mean, if you look at like the Grammys, for example, it makes mm -hmm. it a lot harder for them to start categorizing music. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you notice the, the Grammys the last few years, they've adjusted categories. They really tried to get a handle on, yeah. on, on how music is, is changed here. It's, well, it's, it's tough. It's, it's the same thing with all content. I yeah. mean, as we tape this, the Oscar nominations were this morning. Saw that. And there's this whole big conversation about, do they need a category for most popular film? Because, and you see how many nominations something from Netflix has gotten, which is not necessarily a movie thing. And right. So, you know, the world of content Changing. has changed. Huge. You look at the players that are in it, Hulu and Amazon. And yep. so, but, but also I think that's opportunity if you're prepared. 1,000%. And so today, the audience, being prepared is not the same as before, you know, I'm always conscious on our show about old advice. Yeah. Because old advice was good then, but may not, not be. Not always good advice now. Yeah. So in your hybridizations, producer, writer, businessman, right? Uh, one of the things that all creative people have to have, we have to have, you're in it now, is a place where you can work. Yeah. Right? So you have a couple of places. One of them is 33 House. Tell us about House, that. House 33. House 33. Yeah. And so, tell us why the name. Um, well, the name was actually my business partner's idea. Okay. Uh, so I I'll, thought I'll, your business partner's name was 33. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'll give, I'll give him... 33. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll give him credit for that. Your favorite um, record speed. What's that? Your favorite record speed. There you go. Um, that but would uh, technically be 33 and a third. 33 and true, a third, yeah. True. I thought but, about that after <laughs> not, I said it. Not quite as catchy. Got gotcha. you. Or 33.333. Um, 33. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, we kind of built this space uh, just as almost a, a remix to the traditional recording, uh, you know, methods, which mm -hmm. is go to a studio and, 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 you know, you have the staff, you have everything. Uh, for us, it was, we found that people care less about a big studio now. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Most of your work can be done on a laptop and speakers. And yep. so for us, it was like, how do we create a space that is super comfortable where an artist can come for a month or longer or, or whatever? Uh, it tends to be like at a minimum artists are coming for two to three weeks. Uh, but how do we create a space like that where they can be super comfortable, have everything they need, um, but not also have the privacy, not have to leave mm -hmm. uh, the space. And so that was sort of how the, the concept here and how it was birthed. Uh, yeah, and we've really st started, you know, towards the end of 2018 uh, to go really hard. And, and we've basically 
been booked out uh, every day. I mean, we only have to worry about booking one client because they take over the whole house, right? Right, right. Um, and so, yeah, and we've had, you know, a lot of great feedback and um, the clients love it. And we, we, you know, we have a mobile rig where you can, like, if you want to record in the living room, you could do that or you can work in the studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it just, it gives artists the flexibility to work the way that they want to work. It's, it's residence recording. Exactly. Right, as opposed yeah. to commercial studios. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I've always felt that um, the notion of, because, you know, we get a lot of requests about interns, and there are old ideas about interns that I think may be good to know, but are not necessarily applicable. Yeah. You know what I mean? S sometimes it's etiquette, sometimes it's other stuff. If you're in a place like this, it's be seen but not heard necessarily because somebody yeah somebody has to live there they're living so. there so we'll you know we'll have uh we'll make sure they get checked in they get set up everything's good mm -hmm. uh you know i'll sit there I, I actually live right down the street so i'm you know my studio at my house i mean i can walk there if i mm -hmm. wanted um and so i'll make sure that when the artist brings their engineer in we set it up we we I'll, we'll rewire the studio to fit their criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so the other day we had a client who, who brought their own interface in. No problem. Mm -hmm. You know, a little, little rewiring, good to go. Mm -hmm. And then they're pretty much good to go. I mean, they, they, uh, most artists bring their own engineers. If you need one, we'll provide one. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's, it's more conducive to how a lot of people want to work now. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's going to, the traditional studios are not going anywhere. But it's just another option for, for artists who want to, you know, write and, and be in their own space and, and not have staff walking around. And I mean, in like a way, that. this is the new traditional studio. Yeah, could be. Yeah. It's sad. <laughs> but you can't stop technology, you know? Can't, no, absolutely not. Did what, you, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say the thought process in terms of what you, what you guys put in there in terms of gear had to have the flexibility of some of it being portable, some of it being moved around. Yeah. Um, mostly technology based, probably not a lot of heavy, not live instrumentation and things like that. Well, there, no, right? we have, we, I mean, we have like, uh, you know, guitars and bass and mm -hmm. keyboards and we have, we have stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, most artists want to come, they want to work on tracks, yep. cut vocals, like uh, and, and we're pretty much set up uh, easily for that. This is not the place where you're going to come and do, you know, a, a 30 person choir. It's not. It's not built for that. But for for eighty percent of the work that's being done, or maybe more, uh, it, more it's really su uh, sufficient. And, and what do you work on in your studio? What's your DAW? What's your so in my studio? I have a. Um, I mean, I'm I'm in Pro Tools uh, Logic to start track ideas, mm -hmm. and then I'll bounce the audio out and work in in uh, Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. um, and my setup is I have a dual Raven uh, setup, uh, and I actually have the the Slate VMS. Uh, because uh, I use a Slate mic, so I'll do writing sessions at, yeah. at my place and mm -hmm. we'll cut. And so that uh, VMS-8, uh, which basically has the eight flat yeah. pre's, mm -hmm. uh, so I use that. And for the most part, I mean, I'm pretty much in the box, so. Let me ask you something, and um, I'm a little disappointed in you, so, so I'm gonna frame <laughs> it by that. Um, last time we talked on air, <coughs> excuse me, and then in print, uh, you claim not to be a gear nerd. That, that kind of hurts me. You know, uh, I, I really, I'm really altered. not. Are you going to NAM this year? I am going to NAM. Okay, that's that's a good sign. Yeah. And and are you are you upgrading the amount of plugins you have? Or are you still I have using every plugin in the world? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so just <laughs> glad to see it. Glad to hear it. But I don't look at plugins as gear, per se. It is, but it's not like it's not gear. It's gear. You can't carry a plugin. Yeah, you can. Well, show me, <laughs> show me later. <laughs> but uh, a, yeah, you know, I've always been oh, an audio nerd. <laughs> right. well, nerd, nerd light so right. far. He's a few less calories and proven to me. Are you, how many days are you going to NAM? I'll be there for two days. Okay, he's a yeah. nerd. He's a geek. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and, and I'll be uh, speaking at the Genelec booth and at the Avid booth, so, okay. um, or stage. But uh, yeah, for me, the philosophy behind that is more. Uh, I'm just teasing you, Ben. Yeah, no, I know. But the philosophy is more like, I want to, I'm an earhead. I, you know, it's yeah. really about what I'm hearing and how I interpret yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I'm in a studio that doesn't have all the gear that I want, I can function. Mm -hmm. That's really what, when I say I'm not a gear yeah. head, that's what I mean by that is I don't, yeah. I don't have to have this to be comfortable. Do you yeah. monitor on Gentle X? I monitor on uh, Gentle X. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have 8351s and, and what's great, they tuned to my room. Mm -hmm. So um, now I've, I've tuned my room a little bit, but it's in my house. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's the floors aren't floated. The, right, you sure. Know, but uh, it, it, it's tuned, and, and uh, I have the room sounding great, so. Mm. 
You mm -hmm. said that yeah. you focus on, on um, balance and imaging and panning and EQ. And I think that's brilliant because it transcends genre and um, um, you, you can mix anything with, the, with, with those four concepts. Yeah. Anything. So even, long as you a, understand a, where... A language you've never heard before. Like, yeah. Like you could go to Bollywood and work because that's the essence 1, of... of uh, so long as you understand, you know, whatever genre you're working in, what it's supposed to sound like. How the kick drum goes. And all yeah, that. and ha yeah, stuff like that. Bass, so, so, but that that's always been my approach, and and of course, like you're always going to do some more drastic changes, creative things on different instruments, or maybe you're. Uh, what I find, I do a ton of stuff on um, on delays, like mm. you know, my delay effect chain is probably the longest uh, effect chain in, in my sessions. Um, but for the most part, the, the meat and potatoes, like most of these producers are so good now. What's your go-to delay? Uh, right now, H delay. Um, H -delay. Uh, and I like repeater too. It's oh, really yeah. cool. I'm using that too. Um, but it changes. Every, everyone's you're, different. But H you're delay. You're getting a little nerdy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? Would you say that, um, like I like to describe myself um, as paying attention to feel and groove and, and flow and and emotion and energy, and that's the exact same thing you said, but but you named the tools to do it with. So right. so I think I think we we have a similar approach to that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's sort of just my the the whole gearhead earhead thing. It's just my philosophy on that I don't have to be stuck to one thing. Yeah. You know, I like to try everything yeah. and see what works, what doesn't, and even my favorite delay might work great on this track, but not on this track. So yeah. what we were talking about um, at one point off camera about the evolution of technology and particularly in this space, it's so rapid yeah. that there's no way you really should get stuck on one thing. I think you have to stay open to- Absolutely. Right? It's think? moving so quickly that right. if, if you don't, uh, I mean, like going back to like Mixed by Ali, if you listen to what he's doing on mm -hmm. these records, it's, mm -hmm. it's really amazing. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you just have a static workflow, Mm -hmm. I think your music is going to sound very static. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to sound the and, same. And I'll tell you a, a, I con a conversation I had with Ali at lunch probably 10 days ago and a conversation I had with a staffer of ours yesterday. Um, Ali was talking about, I think it was to Pimp a Butterfly, that he went in this record, he went into that record with no clue what to do because it was a bunch of jazz stuff. It was a bunch of live instrumentation. Yeah. And, um, and he and I had a conversation about fear. And with my staffer yesterday, I was saying, you can't get to greatness by being afraid of it. You have to step into greatness. Like yep. it's not, and, and so some of it is being able to say, ah, oh, the hell with it. I'm just, just going, nuts. I'm just going to try it. Yeah. And then you just don't know what comes out. It could be, you know, yeah, Pulitzer and that album, I mean, To Pimp a Butterfly is such a dynamic album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And going back to what we talked about before, you know, every 15 seconds, something new happens. Yeah. It could just be like a, a little drum hit or, yeah. or a little effect or, yeah. you know, um, or something as, as large as like, a, a, you know, Kendrick doing a different voice or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eminem used to do that a lot. And so mm -hmm. I think attribute that yeah. to Dre. Uh, and it's just such a dynamic record and you never get bored of listening to it. Yeah. You never get bored. Yeah. Well, Can you, I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, well, one of, the, one of the keys in the content game today is it's just sort of death if you're not interesting. Yeah, true. It happens, it's a constant topic on the show. Yeah. About if you just keep doing the same thing, that's yep. just not going to get it. Um, it doesn't matter the audience that you think you're getting it's who you're not getting that you have to pay attention to. Right. They're the ones who don't let you know they're not watching. They yeah. just leave. It, it can't be too formulaic and, you know, I, and I've, I've battled with that, uh, you know, at, at times. But, um, you know, if, if, if you are too formulaic, you know, people just get bored mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll find somebody, they'll find something else. Yep, absolutely. Can so. you, can you uh, for our audience, some of the guys that are, that are young swivels right now, uh -huh. um, can you describe your relationship with Duro and how that got you into, into the business and then take me up to your concept of the hustle? Because you're a hustler. Try to be. Um, yeah, I mean, so Duro was, uh, he was actually my s second internship, but the first one was, it just wasn't a good fit. And he was, the f he was where I really started my career. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I'm just so grateful for him because 
he gave me an opportunity uh, and he never put a ceiling over my head, which some people can do. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, I'm, I'm very ambitious and he saw that and, and when he realized that I was ready for the next thing, like he threw me in the fire and he, he made me sink or swim, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's still one of my best friends. Um, Tell him I said hello. I, I absolutely will. I have so much respect for him. Yeah, and, and um, you know, he was the perfect mentor for me because he was always honest, he was always direct. He had his own uh, philosophies, some of which I've adopted, and then, you know, you take that and then you, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you riff on it, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and he's also had a really uh, interesting career, too. Like, he's not just a mixer. You know, now he's in an A and R at Republic, and mm -hmm. you know he even before that he started his own label and mm -hmm. signed artists, and mm -hmm. you know he he's gone through the, basically every facet of the music industry, and so, you know I admire that and I mm -hmm. sort of look up to that, and I think that's partly why I have taken on a lot of different mm -hmm. you know business ventures and, and things like that is because I learned from somebody who did that himself, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and so that was uh, you know incredibly valuable for my growth. Uh, in the business. Would you so. recommend that it's, it's necessary for a young kid starting out to go to a school, a quality school? Yeah, I mean, what I, what I generally say is school is important to give you a foundational knowledge. But I think when you get into a studio or a situation where you actually have to work and there's a risk of actually being fired, you know, you could mm -hmm. screw up and, and be out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's when you really start to absorb everything. Like, you can absorb everything in school, but if I throw you in a session when you graduate, when you're, you're not going to win. You're not really going to learn. Yeah, you're not going to survive. Learn. Like, because the pressure is on. Yep. You have an artist who's waiting. Yep. Um, and I remember this. I, I graduated full sale. I did really well in school. Um, uh, you know, top of the class, all that. And and I go into this first internship, and I'm working with an artist. Uh, and I was like an assistant, but you know, I would do little pro tools things here and there. And I couldn't fly a hook. Ooh. I mean, I I could. It was just going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, Did you, know, you panic or? Well, no, I wasn't panicking. It was just taking time. And, you know, an artist who's been in yeah. the studio, it's just like, man, why is this taking so long? I, you know, every other person knows how to fly a hook in five seconds. Why is it taking yeah. you like five minutes? Yeah. Um, five minutes in that situation is a long time. Torture. So, um, so yes, I, I do think education, a foundational knowledge, uh, you know, is, is important. I also think if you graduate high school, there's a maturity, a, a social maturity that you get out of going, you know, leaving home and going to live on your own for the first time, Absolutely. which I think is also necessary when you're in the studio. Because if you, yeah. you know, artists don't have time for, to deal with children, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a social maturity you get out of education. So I do think it's important, but I don't think it's the only way mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. my, my yeah. also, thought process. A, a lot of people, like, like my college education, what I thought was the most important thing I got from it was how to get information when I needed it. I learned how to learn. How learn how to learn, yeah. And uh, and I learned how to learn without much sleep and a little chemical enhancement there and there. <laughs> and uh, you get through and that carries on to your, the rest of your life. You, you, you have a problem, you kind of know where to go look for it yeah. other than call Herb and ask him. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but now people are educating themselves with your show and with YouTube tutorials and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So yeah. there's plenty of knowledge now. I mean, when I was in high school, I don't know, I can't remember when YouTube started, but it certainly wasn't uh, the force it is today. Right. right. Um, and, but now you, I mean, I could learn neuroscience on mm -hmm. YouTube if I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so I think that has sort of changed the dynamic of, of what kids who are graduating high school and trying to figure out what their next step is. I mean, they're already, Semi pros in high school because yeah. they just spend their their life on YouTube just watching tutorials and, and learning point. stuff. So well, the watching you guys. Well, the curation is now so to your point, you learned how to learn in college, which is college was prep for life yeah. in some ways. Um, the challenge now, I think, is you have to discern between good information and and not good information yeah, because it's all available to you. Yeah. And you can learn the wrong way. Easily. And That's there's, true. there's a lot of that going on too. And so, you know, the concern that I see, and it's not to be negative, it's just how do you become more specific and start to win is um, you can be really busy and going nowhere. Yeah. 
you it's get true. a lot of information and you think you're killing it and nothing is happening, but you're busy. So true. And you're you're confusing busy for forward movement. And yeah. That's not always it, true. Well, one thing that I've I've always been taught and heard over my life and and really adopted it is everybody should have a mentor and and a mentee. So you should always have somebody who's your north star who you know, has that knowledge and, yeah, and is, I, is somebody I who can, 100%. you know, uh, help you out in situations and, and, and get you closer to where you want to be. And then you also want to have somebody who you can pass that on to, I yep. think is really important just for, yeah. for just in life in general. So um, in your particular case, taking that, um, it strikes me as an observer, an, an, an interested observer, because, you know, from the time we first met you, one, you've been always supportive of us. We've been supportive of you. There was always something yeah. special that we felt was going on, both in the relationship and in the artistry. And same here. <laughs> same here. Um, I think um, your Skio platform, in some ways, allows you to be a North Star for people. And, yeah. and, and um, you already talked about your mentors. And yeah. this is a chance to mentee. And I think that's probably true in the publishing side as well, too. Yeah, and, and you know, in, in, in signing Candace, you know, I'm, my goal is for her to be way better than I could ever hope to be. Mm -hmm. That that means I've done my job. And and off camera, which people don't know, is she hit a milestone today um, that was really pretty interesting and very rare that you might not even be aware of. Did you know this? No, I don't know what we're talking. You about. didn't either. Mm, I don't know she much. She sat in this chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she did. She's off camera going like this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, but but. Because I've always found when you're in a leadership position, it extends to your business platforms. Yes, and absolutely. People deal with you because they trust you and because you'll come through. Yeah, and you feel that responsibility and that obligation. So, yeah, and and the Skio Music platform, I've uh, you know what I try to do. You know, we host a lot of remix contests, and and we're actually uh, a little early to talk about, but a lot of big changes will happen this year. Great. Um, and keep us posted. Up one thousand percent. He's going to become a sponsor. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, um, but uh, you know, it, when when remixers win contests or whatever, I always try to make sure that I can hop on a call with them, a Skype call, Absolutely. and give them fifteen twenty minutes of, of my time and. It's you know, let them ask the questions, give them some, some information. And, uh, and it's great for me, too, because mm -hmm. I'm connecting with the next generation. Like, these are super talented producers mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, are going are gonna to go and kill it. Mm -hmm. So um, I also don't want to feel like I'm getting too old. I want to stay connected to, like, who's next? What's the next it's thing that's going to happen? We call right? it um, shaking hands and kissing babies. Exactly, and yeah. When we, when we appear live, um, whatever we do, we probably shake hands with up to the last person so important available so and important it, and it means so much to that person and yes. it meant a whole lot to me as somebody when i got to meet somebody special yeah that they took a moment yeah to just acknowledge that i was there it, it you have you have to i think it's it's it. it's it's part of the game it is you it's have to do it taxing yeah people have no idea how taxing it is but it's so worth it yeah. so um because yeah. it's a gift we've been given um so publishing Amazing. Started yeah. your company. What's it called? Uh, Waves with Words. Are you still looking for other writers? Always. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So gotcha. Um, they can go to your website or whatever and figure it out. Or how does it yeah, work? Yeah. Well, you know, send me, send me music. There's if you go on my Twitter, there's a submission thing. If you want to send me tracks, and okay. there's a contact form on my website. Anybody can reach out, and I respond to everybody. It's cool. not. You know, cool. it might take a few days, but I always get back mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm I'm always looking for talent. I'm always looking for the next thing and. For me, I try to find people who, you know, with Candace, there was uh, a lot of genius in the writing. Mm -hmm. And and then I felt like there was room for me to really help her with elevating her production. And she does it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, she writes, makes tracks, produces, plays guitar, you know, plays bass. Is she Canadian? No, but close. Okay. Detroit. Oh, cool. Ish. That's, 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 that's yeah. close borderline, enough. Borderline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a um, body of water. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, to me, that's really cool. Also, I love, like, there's not that many female producers. Mm -hmm. And I wish there was more. And I think Same part of that is that there's not a lot of women uh, who graduate high school and see that as a viable, mm -hmm. as a viable career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the more... Uh, women who are actually like making tracks. I mean, there's plenty of female songwriters, mm -hmm. but not a ton of producers who can sit and like mm -hmm. make a drum beat. 
Uh, and so I, I love the fact that she does that and she she's learning so quick. So oh, cool. I'll, I'll turn you on. I can, I can barely keep up. I'll turn you on to a couple organizations yeah. that have that. That, that, that'll be amazing. Yeah. So now are we uh, doing batter's box? Of course. Oh, good. You ready for that? Let's do it. All right. So uh, let's tee it up. Far away. Stereo bus. Um, what have I been using? Uh, you know what? The, the slate, uh, was it the FX7 and Ozone also? U47. Um, love for the right artist, for the right person. Kicks. Um, kicks. Ooh. Nike. At, at this point, <laughs> I got my J's on. Oh, cool. You know what? Probably Splice. Because <laughs> that's where they're all coming from at this point. Yeah. Is you, you know, uh, uh, remember, remember about Splice. Um, virtual Synths. Virtual Synth. Omnisphere. 808s. Um, take a day trip. Mm. Producer reference, but they have some sick 808s that I've been using. Okay. Yeah. Uh, reverb. Uh, reverb, Valhalla, right now. Yeah, for sure. Loops. Uh, loops. Splice, probably. Mm. Strings. Strings. Mm, what have I been using on strings lately? Splice. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I think s s strings, just simple uh, EQ. Just a simple EQ. Snares. Snares. Um, let's see. SSL channel. Cheapest piece of gear you've used on a record we know. Cheapest piece of gear. Oh, probably like a free plugin. Uh, what's the uh, wider, which I've been using? Uh, who makes it? Po uh, Polyverse? The infected uh, mushroom wider. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Free plug in. Great answer. Amazing. Mm. Super useful. Uh, there was one thing I was going to ask you about. Uh, you remember what it was, Herm? Splice. Oh, yeah, your sample pack. How's it doing? Uh, sample pack's going great. Uh, you know, I, I Splice reached out and we started talking, and, and uh, you know, I've been collecting samples forever. Yeah. And so. It, it I pinched a couple off of it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it was just a really fun thing to do. And you know, I, I've been collecting these samples for ages. I, you know, I could do four splice packs right now right. with the amount of samples that I have. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll do another one. Cool. cool. And, and thanks again for considering that I won this time. So. I oh no. It. Uh, Congratulations. <laughs> he's actually conceding because it's the 400th episode. So yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, it's a gift. You so always. So win. this is like a Rams. Patriots thing? Uh, it depends on if you call the helmet to helmet <laughs> it that wasn't called. Um, the uh, amazing to watch the evolution. Thank you. Sure. Much like technology, you just keep moving and growing. Trying so, to. Yeah. Skio, yeah. awards, Spotify Genius Awards, publishing companies, your own mixing, the development stuff, the yeah. recording the studio. Um, Trying. Yeah, Stay but Canadians busy. do it without it being grimy. That's what I, <laughs> right. that's what I love my about man, it. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you for being, um, you're the maiden voyage guest on this this spot that we're now in and also for the 400th episode. Couldn't yeah. have done it with somebody better. Thank you for having me and, and I'm incredibly grateful and always love seeing you guys. So Cool. And I'll see you on now. Absolutely. Yeah. Dave, take uh, us home. Enough to concede defeat to me for once. It's the 400th episode. Oh, no, you won. Okay. For sure. Yay. You won. <laughs> now you take us home. Okay, I, I, that's it. Yay! That's it. I won one. 400 episodes. Well, there you I go. I won one. See Goodbye. you next week. Where's the champagne? <laughs>